Today's world has security vulnerabilities everywhere, right? Even within common dependencies and libraries. That's why it is even more important to introduce new tools that can help you to kind of detect these vulnerabilities in your code or even in your dependencies. And that's why we will go in this short video over a command introduced by the Golang security team to kind of detect these issues and vulnerabilities in your code. So let's just first clarify the question here. How does it even work? What, what does the command do? So the command is go vuln check and it basically scans your code base and your dependencies and it checks them against the go vulnerability database. Now it is important to note here that this command does not check everything automatically, right? It only checks the things you actually call in your code base. Now this makes the tool really smart and of low noise, right? Because it produces not a lot of noise, it only checks the code you are actually calling or you are actually executing. Now a cool use case to kind of make use of this command would be to not run it manually every time you change the code, but to run it in a CACD pipeline, which makes things even more secure and more efficient. Now I will probably make a separate video just about CICD things in Golang, but this is I think a really important fact to know. Okay, so let's check out this command here by introducing some vulnerable code. Now what we got here is a really simplified Golang project. And what we got in the Go mod file, this is really important, we do not have the newest version of the text module from Golang or from the Golang team directly, right? We only have version 0.3.5. Now this version explicitly has a vulnerability inside, right? And you can actually check the vulnerabilities on their database website, right? But let's make use of this package here. All right, a really simplified example here would be to just pass a language identifier or a language tag, right? So a language tag would be en-us, for instance, for the US English language. So what we could do is just make use of the language.pass function, right? And this pass function just takes in a tag or a language tag. So let's say here en-us. Right? And the function returns the tag and a possible error if the possible language or the tag cannot be passed. So what we can say is if error is not equal to nil, and then we, let's just say return, and here we say just print line for now, right? This is a really simplified example. Obviously you could enhance this version here by having proper error handling and all that stuff. But what we could say here is just some error message, right? So failed passing language tag or something like this. And then in the end, we say print line and we say successfully passed language tag. And then we say tag here. All right, so let's format this print line so you can actually see it. And now let's just execute this code. And what we will see is no vulnerability check whatsoever. We only got successfully passed language tag en-us, right? And obviously, when we change this tag here to, let's say, e-us, which obviously does not exist, we get failed passing language tag. Now, hopefully this makes sense here, right? I think it's not really complex. It's really simple to understand. Now, the issue with running this code is that the package or the dependency, the text module actually has a vulnerability inside, right? And we cannot detect this with just running the program. Right, this does not work. And that's why we need this command provided by the Go security team. And we can install this command by just installing it with go install golang.org. And then we use this path here, right, to install the go volunteer binary inside of our go package. Now it's important to note that you need this binary path or the go binaries path inside of your environment. Right, so what this means is if we go to, for instance, ZSHRC, which I use, and then we go down, we actually see that I've here kind of embedded the binaries path of our Go environment to my terminal environment, right? So that I can just execute Golvan check without any kind of prefix or any kind of binary path. All right, so what we could do is go on check and then we can say the path to basically kind of check everything inside of our directory, right? All the files, all the Golang files. 
Now, and obviously, as you can see here, this output actually describes that our code has a vulnerability, right? So we have here the vulnerability identifier. We can use this identifier and go to the official Colang vulnerability database, paste this identifier in, and then we will see a description and how to fix this vulnerability. Right, and, and what we got here is basically a good description that where this vulnerability was found, which is in the package we actually use and how we can fix this, right? And obviously there are two fixes on how we can mainly fix these vulnerabilities. The first one is pretty simple to just upgrade the version, right? Which we will obviously do in a second here because it's really, really simple. Now, if there is no specific fix with your dependency or in your code base possible, with this function, with this vulnerable code, then it's really recommended also by the Golang security team to just use a different function, a different dependency, or some kind of different logic to execute or to finish your solution. All right, now to fix this vulnerability, like I said, we will just upgrade the package here. Now we will just say instead of 0.3.5, we will say 0.3.7. And now we say go mod tidy. And then we run the command again. And now we do not have any vulnerability, right? which is pretty cool. So in the end, it, it's still sad that it found one vulnerability in packages you import, right? But zero vulnerabilities in modules you require. So in the end, your code is affected by zero vulnerabilities, which is pretty cool. And obviously this is not the only vulnerability, right? There are a lot of vulnerabilities and the Golang security team is always trying to fix every single vulnerability. So for instance, there was another vulnerability in Go 1.19. And this specific code here could have led to path traversal issues in your applications that really rely on this constructing of URLs safely functionality. And clearly vulnerabilities shouldn't really scare you of building cool stuff in Golang. Now, if you've liked this video, I highly recommend watching this video here, where I tell you everything you have to know on how to tame your errors in Golang, because they can be quite nasty sometimes. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, have a lovely day, and bye-bye.